Yeah, I just put down the, the record thing. I'm good. All right. Everybody, it's your sign. Okay. All right. So, uh, as Chris said, Ishmael Sanchez, uh, there's my user ID and LinkedIn and Twitter, all that good stuff. A uh, little background about me. Um, I started building sites, I guess, well, before I even got into Drupal, I started uh, building static HTML emails to send out. And then I progressively moved to, you know, managing sites in Dreamweaver Contribute. And then the company I was working for um, used some CMSs. They had a Drupal 4 site. Uh, we had some proprietary stuff. We had some open source stuff. Um, but we really wanted to move to just using Drupal, so I guess I kind of decided to be the Drupal theme person. And that's kind of how I ended up uh, getting into Drupal theming. Then I decided, well, it would be cool to contribute a theme, so I contributed one. Another one, I like this theme that got abandoned, so I took over that. And so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much me uh, and how I ended up as a themer. Um, I'll keep this short. I have all of five slides. I don't like doing long presentations. Uh, if you guys went to the Burbank meetup, uh, you know that I like very short slides. And then we'll look at code, um, and we'll, we'll do a lot of talking. Um, I want to hold off questions until I'm done with my at least five slides, and then uh, you can rifle off questions to me. So, so Drupal theming. This is pretty much for uh, designers. Uh, if you're a developer, you may be kind of bored here, but uh, maybe you can learn a thing or two. Um, but mostly focused for people who are just used to using HTML and CSS, um, have heard about Drupal, have heard about how cool it is, heard that the whitehouse.gov is Drupal and all these other high profile sites are Drupal um, and want to get into it. Uh, but Drupal's different than, let's say, if you're building you know, a static HTML site. Right? Drupal is all database driven, if you um, weren't sure about that or didn't know that. Um, so you have to rewire your thinking for how you build sites. Um, so we're going to go through a series of points even before we get into theming that I think are very helpful. So yeah, one, Drupal's not static. So I even get to this day like a zip file with 30 PSDs and I'm thinking, does this person think I'm going to create a template for each of these? Uh, and it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, so, but you need to look at those PSDs and think, what is this person trying to do? What is this content of this site? What is the purpose of the site? And that's, I think, a step that people just jump into either building something they don't really understand, or they don't take the time to assess all like what the site is going to actually do. Um, I, you always hear content is king. I really don't like that term. So I think content is crucial. That's my term. Uh, you should assess, like I said, what. Um, the site's purpose and what it's trying to do. Um, and then this next point, uh, this is a typical workflow. You get a wireframe, you do the mockups, and then you build the Drupal theme. I think that's backwards. What I think is a better uh, way of doing things is wireframes, Drupal, content types fields, uh, build out the site, then go do your mockup, and then do your theme. Uh, I'll explain why in a little bit. Um, but just to give you an overview of what a typical approach is and what I think the new approach, the agile approach, if you want to throw out buzzwords, is. Uh, sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, you can install, once you've kind of done your little workflow, I know in a perfect world you can do that where you can jump from wireframes to building Drupal. Uh, but if you have to stay with this kind of workflow, this should be what you do, wireframes, mockup, and Drupal components. Uh, when I mean Drupal components, um, I'm just going to, can't see this, but this is a link to Mashable. So if you do have a mockup or a site you want to clone, you need to start identifying, I guess, pieces that are Drupal. This is actually not a Drupal site, but there are a lot of things about this that could be Drupal, right? Here's your site logo. Here's your main navigation. Uh, maybe here's uh, navigation in a block using a nice menu. Here's maybe another block with a nice menu. Uh, you know, you, I'll put welcome to in a T function and the site name. You have have an account with a link to the um, login. You use maybe the add module for blocks or just static blocks. Uh, you use views for, you know, a highlighted content. You output the title and teaser. And, and if these are, are concepts that I'm saying, views, CCK, or, or nice menu, 
take notes or, you know, like when we break out into smaller groups again, ask the developers or ask themers, like, what's a nice menu? What is that going to do for me? What is views? I heard that, you know, good things about us. I mean, there's tons of resources out there. I don't want to spend too much time going into what those are uh, because I think a lot of people here do know what they are. Uh, so, yeah, just breaking up the page into, I guess, Drupal components. So this could be uh, a views uh, with some voting API to filter out, you know, topics that are the most shared by some metric and then you just list out a title that truncates so yeah so i mean that's what i mean when when you need to identify drupal components i mean a lot some of you should be able to see how you could build this in drupal but just to give you an idea of a, of a non-drupal site that could be made to be drupal let me jump back into the uh presentation <coughs> So installing Drupal and base modules. Uh, once again, I said I'm not a, a coder, uh, but I see the value in it. Um, someone told me about Drush a while ago, and I was like, well, I don't do command line stuff. I don't know what that is. Uh, but then someone told me, hey, you know how it takes you an hour to download Drupal and all the modules you use? What if I could say you, you could do that in about a minute? And that you could make this thing called the Drush make file, and you don't even have to download the files. You can just do one line, and it builds an entire site for you. Uh, this is where I think that, uh, to me, that told me. I was like, okay, I'm going to take time to learn how to use this thing. Not because I'm a programmer, not because I'm a, you know, I want to be um, a developer, but because that's going to save me time. And for people who do freelance or for people who work for a company, right, time is money. You need to be doing these things quickly. And if you can do them quickly, you should. Um, so, you know, spend a day, learn Drush. Spend a day, learn Drush Make. Uh, I built a Make file. Uh, the company I work for in Injitsu Web. We, uh, if you Google, uh, if you're on GitHub, like Matt 2000, we have something called Ninja Tools. Uh, you can download our make file. Um, I think you might have to change the API version. And I think we're checking out from CVS, so you'll have to fix that. We'll get an update on that soon. I have those, but they're not uploaded. Uh, so yeah, and if you don't know what Drushmake is, just write it down, and you can come ask me later or ask someone else about Drushmake or and Drush. Uh, so defining content types, uh, you use this module called CCK. Uh, it kind of builds these content silos if you have events or if you have classes or whatever your Drupal site is going to be about. Um, you can define these, but that's what I was saying earlier where you need to define what your content is and what you're trying to do with the site before you even start looking at a theme. So after you go through this process, you've installed your, your base modules, you'll install more modules, right? Drupal has 4,000 modules. If you have a problem, most likely someone has either implemented a solution or has worked on one. So uh, definitely look through the modules. There's different resources for that. Drupal.org is obviously one that's fairly fairly good. Um, but there's a website called Drupal Modules. I think it's .com. That's pretty good. Also about giving evaluations of modules. Um, this is where I said, OK, so after you install more modules, so let's say you wanted to add a link field or a date field or a calendar to your website. These are going to be done through additional modules on top of your base modules, whatever those are. Um, you'll build out the site with real content rather than placeholder content. Um, as designers and, and having worked with a lot of designers, I get these mockups that have titles that are four words long, have teasers that are 150 characters, and they seem to just be perfectly aligned. Now, uh, if you go back to our Mashable example, that's not realistic. Um, just go back here. Like, right, you, your, your content editors or whoever maintains the site is going to want to put a bajillion words in their title. You know, they're going to want to have, you know, a huge teaser. That they're going to want to do all types of crazy stuff. And so your mock-up really isn't true. That's why I'm saying you should build out your site. And in, in a perfect world, build out your site first with at least some real content and then do your mock-up. That makes more sense. It's also going to save you uh, time, money. And probably a lot of headache. Uh, if you make this mock-up that you promised them the world, and you like, okay, well, how am I going to do this in Drupal? Well, that you have a problem right there. Uh, and, and I mean, you promised them that mock-up. They wrote off. They signed off on it. They're going to expect exactly what you promised them. And so, uh, yeah, I would hate to be you. Uh, so it would be cool if uh, you know to, to do these things in, in you know I guess a different way. Uh, go back. All right, so we've done all that good stuff. Uh, so notice we still aren't uh, actually into theming. Uh, oh. So when you build a theme, you really have kind of three options. 
you can download a contributed theme, and you can make edits, uh, you, which isn't really the best thing to do. Uh, I started off like you know doing things the wrong way, you know, copying Garland, naming it my Garland, and trying to get Garland to work with whatever mock-up that someone had provided me. That's definitely a route that you should avoid. Uh, definitely take my experience and uh, don't do that. Uh, you can sub-theme. Uh, there's tons of themes. Uh, I guess on the theming links, you know, Fusion, uh, Zen, 960, uh, Basic. There's tons of, of, of uh, sub-themes, or, or they call them starter themes, um, that allow you to copy um, some code and, and get a base so that you can do your customizations. Or you can just write custom code. If you like rolling your own CSS, uh, you can do that. Uh, there's a lot of uh, themes that are part of a framework. I like using 960. There's a blueprint uh, theme that you can use as a base. Um, I can roll my own CSS, but I would like to have a personal life, so I'd rather use someone's framework that's tried and true, and then I can apply it. Um, but there's always that route. This is also the progression where it's download something custom. That's also probably in the ordered by difficulty and by time. So downloading, obviously downloading and tweaking the theme is pretty easy. Uh, Sub-theme means more advanced and then custom, right, you're going to take a lot of time. Uh, some modules you should use when you're developing themes is uh, Devel. And then also uh, you can look at the listing of themes. Uh, if you don't know what Devel is, once again, ask somebody. It's a, it's a pretty cool theme, uh, tool module that lets you find out where stuff's coming from and what's available to you. The themes page is a great place to see all the different themes, Zen, Fusion, all these things I was talking about. Uh, let me go into some examples about uh, these themes. So we can see some uh, sites in the wild that are uh, running a theme, contributed theme. So if you haven't seen the ladrupal.org uh, site, which was built by a lot of uh, community members here that looks uh, great, uh, it's using the Marinelli theme. So that, that's uh, something you can do. It doesn't look like the Marinelli theme, but it's using it. Um, uh, let's see. What was that? Uh, I'm not sure I didn't actually work on the this that theme. Uh, Verit Exchange, uh, a theme that I uh, started, but uh, my old employer. Uh, and Ron, you'll have to tell them about this thing. This is uh, busted. But this is a theme that I'm not sure if, if people know. Uh, if you take a look at this section right here, uh, you might be able to tell what, what theme this is. So that was pretty much implemented in, in we're talking about doing themes in hours, not days. So that was uh, the theme you, or the site you just saw, Verde Exchange, was built using Robots 960. You can kind of see it's got the same nav, it's got a, this large image, and it had the uh, search. Um, it didn't look like Robots 960. There's a lot you can do with just downloading a contributed theme and changing some things. Um, just wanted to point that out. You're robot. It's the wrong answer. Uh, another theme that actually I built. Uh, let's see. Green market producers. Uh, this is also a um, a theme of Marinelli. Uh, I created a sub theme, but I think my CSS file has a hundred lines. Um, I just changed the colors, and then I did some regions. Uh, took three hours. Granted, it's not you know the most compelling thing, but it's it's stuff you can do with Drupal and things you can do very quickly. 
Uh, so we'll cut back over to the slides. Okay, so themes are just basically CSS and template files. Uh, if you want to do more advanced processing, you know, uh, add variables, or you want to do some fancy, you know, lightbox stuff, you can do some of that stuff with modules. Uh, some of the stuff has to be done with advanced processing and pre-process function, pre -process functions in your template.php. Um, something else you should be aware of is is what you know. What's the goal? I said this again with the content, but it's going to come up again. So you install those modules. Now, the client had a laundry list of features, but you're starting to realize that either they don't have the budget for those features, or they didn't really know what they want, and it's your job as the developer designer to figure that out. Uh, do they need the print module, which provides you know PDFs, print, print templates, uh, an email a friend feature, or do they just need a print CSS where you can, you know, if you print out the page, it's in a friendly, it doesn't have all the background images, all the color. You should really assess what you need before you start installing all these modules, or if you do install them, assess do you really need them, because as you get, uh, as your site grows and gets bigger, uh, you get up into the 100 plus modules, and with every module having an update or a security update, it becomes a maintenance pain. Uh, so things to keep in mind. Uh, I love modules, um, but you don't always need them. So you should assess if, if you truly do need a module or not. Um, if you do, there's Drush Up. <laughs> yeah, there's Drush Up, yeah. Uh, back again with the uh, command line stuff. Uh, you know, if you had maybe five or six modules to, to upload or to update, uh, you could do it manually, maybe take you an hour. You could do Drush Up and it'll take you a minute, maybe two. Uh, so that's where I was saying use these tools. Uh, you don't have to be a developer to use these tools. Uh, they're time-saving tools. That's how I look at it. Um, you're... The core modules folder in Drupal, you shouldn't touch anything there, but you can definitely take a look and copy folders from the system folder. And this is in Drupal 6. In Drupal 7, you, there's still some of those in there, uh, but you may have for some other ones. Let's go back. Um, you need to sanitize your data. If you're outputting stuff in your theme layer, you can pull a lot of stuff out of Drupal, uh, but you need to be careful when you output it. You need to be careful that it's not going to either break your site or do something even more potentially dangerous. Uh, that's your job as a themer. And my last slide, uh, just some tips. Uh, use an administration theme when you're developing themes. Uh, if you happen to be unfortunate to be logged out of a site, uh, have a theme error, don't have an administration theme, you've just locked yourself out of your site. So unless you have access to the database and you can go into the system table and change that, uh, turn off that theme, uh, your site's locked out. And without, you know, some uh, host providers don't try to have error message turned on, so then you just get the dreaded white screen of death. Uh, so make sure you have an administration theme. It's also nice for users. Uh, it's a good usability thing. Uh, that way people know, okay, I'm on the front end, I'm on, you know, a content page. I'm on an administrative page, right? They're kind of the same, but they're different, right? Being on the blocks admin page is different than, you know, editing a node. Uh, you should install UI and UX modules. People say Drupal usability is bad in Drupal 7. Uh, I've, I've built a couple of sites with it. Uh, it's, it's great. Uh, but Drupal 6 has these modules out there too. You know, things like admin menu, uh, admin, module, uh, vertical tabs, you know, WYSIWYG, all that good stuff. Uh, it's there, and you should use it. Uh, when you're developing your actual themes, uh, doc type, uh, this came out in Burbank, uh, you should use a strict doc type. Uh, if you use other doc types uh, and you have it's in you know you're troubleshooting what's wrong with it, it could be a pain. It's just easier to start uh, with a strict doc type. Um, our friend IE, you need to have IE specific style sheets. Uh, there's different ways to implement this, uh, but uh, uh, we'll take a look at, at how I do it. Um, you, if you find a better way that works for you, by all means. Uh, and then a little tip about using a teaser check in your node templates lets you have different layouts. Uh, and we'll, we'll go into that. So that's uh, the end of the slides. Uh, so if uh, anyone has any questions, answer some questions before we start looking at code. Um, what's updated for Drupal 6? Is it Zen? I guess, well, I'm comfortable with Zen. Uh, Zen, when I first learned how to Drupal theme the right way, instead of using Garland, uh, I fell in love with Zen. 
it's really cool. It taught me a lot about negative margins that I don't even know if I wanted to know all that. Uh, but I find that um, unless you want to kind of still hand roll your CSS but just not deal with layouts, it's not necessarily the best theme, at least for me, because there's no style. And, uh, and right, you may always want to start from scratch, but at the same time, it's nice to have something. Uh, Genesis is pretty cool. Uh, I've had good experience with that. Um, I use 960 a lot because I like that. Um, I didn't even know about the 960 framework. I just said, hey, this looks cool. People are doing it, so I'm going to try it out. Um, and then what I've been doing lately, I was bored Monday, so I looked at someone's sandbox, and I built a reflex or responsive theme because I hear that term thrown out a lot. So you can take a look at that. Um, I built a responsive theme in Drupal 6, so if you look at it in an iPhone, a BlackBerry, a, a Droid, a tablet, you know, whatever you want, it'll still perform itself. So um, it, it's kind of whatever suits you the best. Uh, use the tools you know. Um, like I said, I used to build sites in Dreamweaver. Um, and actually, I have to thank Chris Charlton. I don't know where he's at. But his plugins for, for Dreamweaver are rad. Uh, they actually help out a lot. But if you build, you know, use the tools you know. But don't be afraid to learn new ones. Um, so yeah, I don't really have a best one. Uh, Community-based, I guess, if you look at the statistics, Zen, Fusion, Marinelli, all the top ones, if you look at the themes page, are going to be what people are using. So there'll be a lot of documentation, and there'll be a lot of uh, support issues there, too, that you can look at. So um, anyone else have any questions before we jump into some code samples? All right, so we're going to build the theme. This is a quick and dirty way to build a theme. Uh, so I use Komodo, so that's uh, my editor. Um, so themes, like I said, are just CSS files and uh, template files. So we can create a new theme by just calling it my theme. Uh, you need a folder in your site's all themes directory. Um, that's where it should go. Uh, if you're doing a multi-site, it may, may change, but that's usually where it goes. Uh, in, your, uh, in that folder, your my theme, you'll have at least one file. So, and it needs to be an info file. I'll save you some of the typing. I have some of the info stuff already done. Uh, so an info file pretty much just has these core things. That's all you need. So you need a name. I need a description. And uh, my comments in there also say where your thing is. You know, on the admin page is where it's going to be. I think it's in Drupal 7. It's configure, build themes or something, structure. Uh, or appearance, appearance. Uh, the the version is needed and PHP uh, engine, uh, the template type. Uh, in Drupal 7, they say that you don't need that, but I have found issues if you look at that converting six to seven themes. People have had problems with this, so I leave that in my seven themes too. So just something to uh, keep in mind. Uh, there are actually more stuff you can add to your. Uh, let me open this up all the way. Um, to your info file, these aren't required. Uh, you can put uh, features for all the things that you support. Uh, your screenshot, otherwise it'll just default to the the core uh, folder. I like keeping my themes clean. You, you'll see that when I open up another theme. Regions by default, the header, left, right, content, and footer regions are enabled. If you want to add more, uh, you need to actually define uh, regions. Uh, so like here, you, you see I have a content top and a content bottom. We don't need those. If you have any kind of uh, scripts, you can load those up too. Uh, conditional IE, right? Uh, we talked about that. And then you need one style sheet at least if you have a theme. So this is all we really need. Uh, we'll save it in our my theme folder. And it has to have the same name as the folder. So my theme.info. And we'll create another file, our CSS file. So we have our custom.css, we have our info file, uh, and now I'll, I'll just go ahead and uh, turn that on. 
we don't need this anymore. Uh, I'm using admin menu if, if someone hasn't heard of that. Uh, you see I have an administration theme because we could probably just break something right here, but uh, doing a live demo, but just in case. So themes are sorted on the theme page alphabetically, so you can just jump to my theme. So that's the description. Uh, that's the theme name. There's no screenshot because there's not one exists. We'll turn it on. And this always takes longer when you're presenting, so just bear with me. So we're still using our administration theme. It tells you that, uh, but we'll open up another page uh, with our, our new theme, which is just core Drupal and a pink background. So there, it didn't take all but a couple minutes to build the Drupal theme. Uh, obviously, it's definitely more complex than that, but that's a good starting point. Uh, from here, you can do things like you know, go into um, the system folder, like I was talking about. And copy some of the core templates. Like I said, copy, not not uh, not move or edit directly. Um, but like you can see what's what's in the page.tpl. And you should definitely spend time. Look, there's tons of documentation. People spend hours to put this documentation here. Uh, and it's you know it, it'd be good, and it'll give you good karma if you actually check these things first before posting an issue like it doesn't work. Uh, definitely check. Um, so that was creating a, a custom theme. You can do that pretty quickly. Let's look at some themes that are already pre-built. Uh, if you want to do a base theme, uh, I actually have a, a, a base theme already built. Um, just maybe opening up here will give you a sense of, of how I like to keep my themes. So I have a fave icon. Uh, I put it in this folder because um, although you could put it in the root directory like you do on a static site, um, and you're not actually modifying core, but you're mucking core up, and I don't like doing that, and it works just fine. Uh, if you don't have an uh, ICO file, let's say you use the default, you know, Drupal has that uh, on the edit theme, uh, on the configuration screen, it allows you to upload a custom uh, fave icon. Uh, that won't render in IE7, or in other IE versions. So if you do that, you can do that, and it'll work great in Firefox and some other uh, themes, but if you do it this way, it'll work in IE. So that's why I do it like that. Um, you'll see I, I'm pretty organized. I have my uh, images in an images folder. I have my JS in a JS folder. Uh, you can see I'm using Kufan for this theme. We'll take a look at that. Uh, you see all styles are there. Really, it's just one custom file and some IE. And then templates, I like to organize them. Uh, you see themes that just have these plotted out everywhere. Um, for me, that's insanity. Uh, I don't like that. Um, you can even, I've seen people get more granular where they have a views folder. Uh, and Drupal is really smart. It's re it'll look through these directories recursively. So you could nest views and do your view name and put 10 templates there and then have another one and just have that all uh, laid out. It might be annoying to actually click into those, but uh, it's nice for file organization. Yeah, uh, actually caught me out the other day because I was trying to move them out of views or, or rename the views one and I was still finding them. And I'm like, why? Oh, it looks recursively. <laughs> yeah, so definitely, uh, you know, if things aren't working, take a look at that. But it, it's a cool feature if you want to be organized. Um, so to do a base theme, uh, we'll go back and we'll open up my 960 base. I'll close these from our custom theme. Where is it? 960 base. So pretty much is the same thing. Uh, we'll look at my uh, info file, and it's the same as before. It's got a name description. It's got a core. It's got the engine. Uh, the key line is this. You're defining a, a base theme, which means it's going to inherit from the parent. It's going to take all uh, the styles um, from the parent and apply them, which means all your layout, all, all the kind of default you know, reset, it's going to load all that. And then at the end, it's going to load your one custom style. Uh, here, uh, they wanted Kufan, so I did that. Uh, we can take a look at those if you want. And then here, they wanted a crap load of regions, so I created them. Um, and then we can take a look at the actual um, page template, which this, this is what gets generated. And actually, let me switch the theme so we can take a look at that from our pink theme. We'll, uh, we'll change to something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, so we'll do my 960 base. It says no screenshot. 
Which one? This one? No, it's text, right? Yeah. All right, so I just enabled my theme. Once again, we're not, uh, I'm using an administration theme, so you can actually see the changes, but I'll go to a regular uh, page, and you'll see we have some that kind of resembles the Drupal site. We have these nice uh, regions. Uh, if we look at the source code, we'll see that uh, it's actually inheriting from the 960 theme. You don't actually have to turn on your sub-theme, but your sub-theme needs to be installed. So if you notice in the info file, it, I put base theme 960. If you base theme, yeah. If you don't have your base theme there in that in your themes folder, it'll look broken. So I had a someone who was using a, a a theme that I built, and they're like, "It's broken. It doesn't work at all." And I was like, "Do you have the base theme installed?" And they're like, "Oh." So uh, something if you run into that, but you'll see it loads the framework, the reset, the 960, and some debug. Um, and then at the end, it ends. It loads our nice custom style sheet, which is pretty bare bones. We'll take a look at that. Um, style sheet is is very short. It's and I don't think I wrote all of this, but I wrote some of it. So it's 600 lines. Uh, I've seen themes that have 3,000 lines of CSS, and that's madness. I don't know what they were doing, or if they knew what were they were doing at all. Hey, don't uh, make fun of me. <laughs> I've seen, seen those themes. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but they shouldn't be that long. I think. Um, I'm pretty sure they shouldn't, uh, but just in case, uh, you know, if you see that. Uh, so there's that, um, and in our page, what's up? They shouldn't be that long for maintenance purposes, or? Uh, I just think if you're writing concise, good CSS, it shouldn't be that long. I mean, right, there's variables and stuff, like depending upon how, site the, how big the site is. Uh, but yeah, for maintenance, it's a nightmare too, because then you're just finding a, uh, you know, you're using CSS specificity, to just trump whatever's there, you don't want to really want to break anything. It becomes uh, unmaintainable. So, Ishmael, how do you troubleshoot problems when they arise? Like what a you problem? Know, like like you, you've got like one of these hundred line CSS files, and there's just something that's just not running. How do you how do you Firebug. go through Firebug. 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 just Firebug straight Firebug. up? Yeah, well, there's, 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 there's theme developer. Yes. Yes. I don't use theme developer that much it because it, it mucks up your site sometimes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, Firebug is your best friend. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Firebug is, it's it's kind of a lifesaver. Uh, you have this little guy. It's a Firefox plugin, and then you can tell where things are coming from. Uh, right, this is all coming from my uh, my actual <coughs> base theme, which is the 960. It does all this resets for me. Uh, if you see uh, this CSS and stuff that I wrote, it's coming from the custom. Uh, it lets you turn things on and off, so that's cool. So, if, I mean, you can write, you can add stuff here too. There's two questions, Ishmael. Okay. What? Yeah. On that side of the room. There is an issue though. If you have too many short CSS files, you may run into problems with something like IE8, maybe uh, yeah. 9. Sure. Too many CSS files. So right. poses a little bit of like 31. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have the, uh, there's the IE 31 limit. Uh, there's a module that fixes that, obviously. Uh, but um, not good for development. Uh, you can also uh, aggregate your CSS, but that's also uh, not good for development. Um, well, for development, um, how is it? called IE CSS Optimizer. It can So then it just aggregates all of your module CSS files, and it leaves your, your, your theme one alone. So, what was that called? So, what was the module name? Module name? What's the module name again? IE CSS Optimizer. IEC, yeah. So, this goes back again like, do you need that module? If you're kidding the 31 limit, right? You may need it. You may need all those modules, but really reassess do you need all? Because they're going to load a CSS file. That's yeah, another story. Yeah, so uh, there's that. Um, any another question? Well, I just have a comment to your answer to Firebug. Did you use a Dreamweaver CS5 or something like that? Because that's what I was using. Yeah. And it didn't work for me. So I just wanted to make sure that if you have 
and so recognize all your pages. You've got all your CSS, you've got your JavaScript. Everything is right there, right inside of the menu for you. You can do all your editing. Um, it will highlight all of your code, absolutely everything. Cool. I use that much more than Fiverr, honestly. Yeah, yeah, definitely, like I said, use the tools that you know. Um, you don't have to use these things. Uh, sometimes when you're debugging things, you, uh, you don't have access to a site. But if you do have access to a site, I mean, you heard right there, uh, Dreamweaver is still a, a good option for theming. Um, but you don't even need access to the site. I mean, if all you need to do is, is set what your main page is, and it will take pull everything from there as far as setting up your links and that's cool. Any other questions? I'm going to go over uh, some advanced processing and some IE stuff if I have a, a, a little bit of time. Um, so yeah, so you'll see in my uh, template I have this check for IE. Uh, I think this designer added this for this check for this uh, PNG fix. Uh, but you can see the IE uh, styles. It goes to this folder and that file. And then here, uh, you know, you can do your hacks. Uh, you can do the underscore hack for Drupal uh, or for IE six and below. Uh, you can do just a general statement for all IE. You can do a star hack for IE seven and below. You can use the this guy, this backslash nine for IE nine. Uh, so uh, this is where you probably want to do all your one-offs. You'll notice because I'm using a strict doc type and things are working good that we only have a few of these. IE hacks. Uh, that's ideally what you should do uh, if your code is, is, is semi clean. Uh, you can avoid a lot of IE style sheets just by um, having good code. Uh, not that this code is perfect, but um, you'll see we can run through. We're using the body classes. Uh, if you haven't used that, if your theme's not using it, that's a big deal. Uh, body classes let you do uh, very kind of nice targeting of, of elements. Uh, if I go to a page, Your theme's busted. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can you can troubleshoot it. I was I was helping Phil this earlier today. His uh, body classes weren't working, and we found a, an issue on Drupal.org uh, where his body classes uh, where there was an issue that it's a known that's busted. Yeah, someone, someone someone in this theme I was working on they implemented a template preprocess, and they just set classes to hook. That's it. Like. <laughs> So everywhere it was all messed up. Like it wasn't getting any views classes or anything. That's and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tweeted about it. So uh, if you see these body classes, you can do some cool things. You can target node types, uh, pages with only one sidebar or right sidebar, uh, all this great stuff. Um, and, and we'll take a look at, at the code behind that. Uh, if you just print body classes, it does a lot of cool stuff. But just to show you, um, since we do have a little bit of time, we'll look at the template.php. And this is a little bit more code heavy, but definitely cool stuff you can do. Um, so here, uh, this is stuff from the 960 theme. Uh, but um, I'm adding a, a new template suggestion. That's something different. But for my body classes, I'm adding a page URL. I'm adding a section. If I'm on a node add page, I'm going to add that, or a node edit. Uh, I think just a regular node page. Uh, and then I'm doing some stuff for the active classes. Uh, if you if you open up Zen, it'll do all this. It'll have an example. I think this may be a little bit more than what Zen's doing, but uh, it's still cool um, because it lets you target all these things like I'm on a page node, um, I'm on a node type blog. Uh, there's something else that it's... It lets you target your CSS. So um, something else, some other additional pre-processing processing things I'm doing. Um, I have, if you've ever opened up your node template and you see that it's got if sticky, if published, if comments, it's a mess. Uh, I have all this wrapped up into one class. It does all this, and I'm just outputting uh, classes in my uh, node template. Um, that's actually pretty. That's standard now in Drupal 7. Uh, you don't have to do that. It already does it for you. But if you like your template files clean. Uh, you can see I'm just printing out classes instead of is you know what the status is if it's published if there's comments all that stuff that's gone I'm just printing out classes uh, you'll see my template files are actually very very trim and they're very neat I, I like it that way I, I don't like having tons of, of variables you shouldn't have tons of checks 
in your node templates, they should be really clean. They should just do simple checks and output a variable. Uh, some of the other things that I'm overriding here, the post, uh, the submitted by, and the node uh, comments. And I'm unsetting I'm this. I don't know if people care about this, but uh, you know how on blog, if you turn on blog, it says follow someone, or this is somebody's blog or admin's blog or whatever. You can use this code to just unset it. So, and if you don't return it, it'll kill, it, I think it kills your page, I'm not quite sure. But uh, you can test that out if you want. Uh, but uh, if you'd want to get rid of that, you know, admin's blog or so-and-so's blog, that's how you do it. Um, so let me look at another theme. Um, oh, let me just open the Kufan because that might be something that people are interested in. So for people who don't know what Kufan is, it's just like a text replacement uh, for using fancy fonts. Uh, so really, if you add the Kufan.js and you add it to your info file, all you need is that, and it's going to replace your um, those uh, classes or divs with uh, you know the Kufan font. Uh, and then I'm using this nice little CSS or jQuery thing uh, to do this guy over here, where it says search. Oh no, search is gone. Search. So that's that. Uh, let me look at the reflexive theme, uh, and if anyone, let me change to that. Yeah, there are pros and cons, but uh, I think for this one it was just what they were using. Um, So we're turning on this less framework. Uh, this is the thing I did on Monday. It's kind of cool. It uh, it changes based off. It does media queries, uh, so it may not work for like older devices, but it works pretty good on any modern device. Uh, and if you have a Windows 7 phone, anyone here have a Windows 7 phone at all? Please. Well, if you know someone, have them hit me up because. I need a test in Windows 7, and I think I'm good to go. Uh, maybe you don't need to test. Oh, yeah, maybe I don't, but I want to cover my bases. So here's our, our uh, responsive, re reflexive, I don't know what you call it, responsive theme. Uh, so I do this, and you see my sidebars have now gone to the bottom. Uh, and it's source ordered, so meaning the contents first. Uh, if I go to, uh, let's do mobile. Just give me one column. The reason it has all this around it is because there's actually a fair amount of padding in the framework. I don't actually like that, but it's what it does. Uh, and if we have um, a mobile screen, 320 pixels, it still looks kind of the same. Uh, so that's a fun little thing, and it works on different devices. I did BlackBerry, I did Droid, and I did I, uh, uh, iPad, so it works pretty good. Uh, so yeah, if you have a have a home rolled framework, you can build a, uh, a theme just the same way we did, a folder, an info file, and uh, the framework CSS here, I have a layout CSS that handles Drupal, and you could write a custom CSS that does, oh, I have it here, to do all, you know, all your aesthetic stuff. But that's about all I got. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'll be around. You can definitely hit me up. You can talk theming all day. Uh, any other last minute questions? I think they, they gave me the, the push. No questions? All right, cool.